Do you think you're letting your light shine or are you hiding it under a bushel? Join us for lunch. Thanks for joining us for lunch. Today, we are meeting with a Bible teacher and a prominent leader in the UK Church Network, Dr. Hugh Osgood. A big welcome to lunch. Thank you very much, Nonya. It's great to be with you. Thank you. I can't thank you enough for stopping for lunch today. <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs> so here we are, February 2018. Do you think God is doing anything specific this year? I think it remains to be seen. But I think we're in a really interesting position. I look at what God's been doing over the last few years and there's a sense in which so many things have been coming together. But when I look at it, it's very much like when Ezekiel prophesied over the bones, that first of all, all the bones came together. But what we really need now is to prophesy to the wind and to see the Spirit of God blow through all the things that have come together over the last year or so. Is there anything in particular that we can prophesy about? I think what we can look at is really just that sense of the Spirit of God bringing things to life. So if you're looking at um, people in the workplace, for example, to be a living witness rather than just to be there as someone who's, you know, doing the job, I think is really important. So I think somehow it's when the Spirit lights us up individually that the church really becomes the light of the world. And I think that's really important. I like that, the light of the world, because the Bible says we are the light of the world. How can we make sure that our lights shine more and more this 2018? Well, it comes out of a close relationship with God, doesn't it? The closer we are to Him, the more the light's going to shine. I think one of the things where the church has gone wrong a little bit is that we haven't understood exactly what the light's meant to do, because it says, well, don't put it under a basket. That's the first thing, isn't it? Some of us are really good at trying to hide the light. But he says, no, let's put the light on the lampstand where everyone can see it. But then he uses the expression, so that it can give light to the whole house. And I think that the church has got to come to that understanding where we realize that we're meant to be giving light to the whole house. I can think of lots of times when the church has wanted to be like a searchlight, looking around for what it can shine on to show it up and say, that's not right, that's not right. But I think the sense of being light to the world is actually giving light to the whole house, being there as a... Uh, a, a radiant force that actually makes a difference. I'm sure someone watching might be wondering, what does that actually translate to my everyday living? <laughs> well, in some ways they need to get that close relationship with God, get out there and start living without putting the light under the basket, and they'll soon see what a difference it'll make to their everyday living. It's just that willingness, isn't it, to be open to the Lord and to allow that light to be expressed. You don't have to mention Jesus every other word when you're in the workplace. But if Jesus is at the centre of your life, then that light begins to be seen and people realise that there's something different about the way that you're living your life. And I think that's really, really important. And sometimes when we're trying to work out the specifics, you know, should I be doing this, should I be doing that? I think the real lesson is let's focus on the Lord and then let his light radiate through us in every situation where we are. Focus on the Lord. Yeah. How do we do that? How do we do that? Well, for me, it's a number of things. I definitely uh, am someone who really committed to, to reading God's Word. I think that's really, really important. I think talking to the Lord in prayer is important too, so that we've got that ongoing relationship with Him. And also then, you know, when you're in the midst of a challenge, making sure that you don't sort of think, I'm going to solve this problem on my own, but actually bring that problem to the Lord and bring the Lord into the problem as well. So that there's some of the things in which we can do to be focusing on the Lord in the midst of our daily lives. Some other things like? Well, I think also, you know, let's just go back to not hiding the light under a bushel. So someone, you're in a workplace situation and someone's asking you, you know, what you did at the weekend. It's very easy to say everything except I had a great time at church, you know. I really met with God and we had something. You know, that's just a natural statement that you could make. But what we often do is think, I mm, can't really say that, you know. But there's a, there's a sense in which that boldness and that openness can really make a difference. So in today's world where political correctness has somehow become the order of the day, how do we actually let our light shine? 
you know, I don't think political correctness is too much of a problem when it comes to letting your light shine. I think the political correctness comes in when you're trying to actually switch other people's lights on. <laughs> Whereas there's something infectious, isn't there, about you living your life in a way that speaks for God, and other people begin to see that, and let them ask the questions. So I think there's a huge amount that we can do, even in this politically correct day and age. We don't need to tread on everyone's feelings in order to put across what we want to say. We can trust God to let that light actually impact other people as we're, we're living out in front of them. Amen. And then if we let our light shine, is there anything in particular you think God might be looking to do through the church this year? Yeah, I do think there's a lot that God wants to do through the church this year. I do think society is looking for answers in many ways. And I think that a church that's actually engaged with the world will make a whole lot of difference and a church that stands apart. I think sometimes we're very critical. But, you know, what's the point of having... We talk about being the light to the world, but you know, it also says, and we're the salt. There's no point having the salt stacked on the side of the plate. Somehow, it only gives flavour to the food if we're prepared to actually engage. So I think God's really saying to the church in 2018, let's get engaged, let's make a difference, let's impact the world just by sharing our lives and being in the midst of all that God's doing. And how can church leaders help towards this? Well, one of the things that church leaders have got to do is to realise that when we meet together on Sundays, that's equipping us for the rest of the week. You know, I've often said to church leaders, just imagine that, you know, okay, Sundays is great, everyone's gathered together. But supposing every one of those people that's gathered together was like a light on a map and then you could see just where your church is impacting during the week. And you know, some churches, they, they don't realize how extensive their impact is. I know of church leaders who don't actually know where church members work or what church members do. So they have no idea how much impact their church is having. Once you've got an idea that you've got a congregation that can impact and engage, it changes the way you preach. It changes the way you prepare. You suddenly realize that we're here to equip the people of God because they're on the front line. And we're in a sense, we're the supply line for the front line. Okay, so that's for the leaders. Yeah, that's for How the leaders. About the congregation. Well, be recipients, you know. If you've got a pastor who's prepared to encourage you and say, look, where you are working really matters. You know, there's probably not a whole bunch of Christians in your workplace. Very often you feel like I'm alone. But actually, being that witness in the workplace, even if you're just there as the one person with that testimony, makes a difference. So we've got to realize that God values us where we are and actually be prepared to let the light shine wherever God's placed us. So Doctor, a lot of our viewers have left work to join this program. No, they have. Are you happy to pray about our business and careers? I'm delighted to. So thank you for joining us this lunchtime. It's been my privilege to be with you. And I really hope this is a regular commitment for you because you can get some encouragement. But right now, I'd like to pray for you. Pray for you where you work and pray for you in what you do. So Father God, I just want to thank you for everyone who's joined us this lunchtime. I want to thank you, Lord, for what they bring into their workplace. I pray, Lord, that you'll give them the boldness to let their light shine so that people may see their good works and glorify you, our Father in heaven, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Dr. He Osgood, thank you so much for chatting with us today. And thank you for watching. I hope you've been blessed. By the way, how have you been letting the light of Christ shine through you? Please let us know in comments and we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.